Good morning. Welcome. Uh, if we have the pleasure of any guests, uh, guests um, we'd ask you to sign the guest book in the narthex in the rear of the church. Um, there are many things going on in the life of our church and uh, ask you to take a look at the bulletin for some of them. Uh, there are just two that I would like to mention. Uh, first thing is that uh, we're coming up on the fourth anniversary of the passing of our friend Peg Hebden. Uh, she was a, such a friend to so many of us in the church and uh, inspired us with her faith. Uh, so keep her in uh, your thoughts and prayers. Uh, secondly, on uh, a pleasant note, uh, there's the upcoming church family picnic on September 11th. That's also in your bulletin. Um, Christian Education will be providing uh, the hot dogs and drinks. So if you could bring a side dish and, and maybe a lawn chair to sit in, uh, that would be great. But that's September 11th. Are there any other announcements? Uh, see none. Let us uh, prepare for worship as the light and the word are brought into the sanctuary. all those who are able to stand for the call to worship as we read responsively from the bulletin. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. He is he is us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. The Lord, Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness for all generations. Uh, please remain standing for our opening hymn, which is At Calvary, number 510 in your hymnal.
please remain standing for our invocation. O God, who is greater than the most powerful forces in this world, enable us to be still and know that you are God. O Lord, who answers out of the whirlwind of everyday life, breathe in us your Holy Spirit to strengthen, comfort, and guide us in the midst of the storm. O still, small voice, speak to us this hour that we might become makers of your peace in our homes, in our communities, in our world. We pray this in the name of the one who calmed the raging sea and who gave us the example to pray as we now say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now please be seated. Our Old Testament reading today is Psalm 51 and is found on page 476 in your pew Bibles if you'd like to follow along. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to the rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that at my mouth may praise you. You do not desire of sacrifice or would I offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you do desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. May God bless our hearing and understanding of this, his holy word. Well, good morning. Beautiful faces out there this morning, and uh, I hear some angelic voices. Now I can kind of pinpoint where they're coming from, <laughs> although I've had an idea. Um, it's great to hear. My first mistake. We have a hymn we must sing here. There's Jesus paid it all, and I believe I'm following in somebody else's footstep from last week. So I apologize. Let us stand and sing hymn number 589. Jesus paid it all. 489. Four, oh, I got 589. Yep, it's 489 there. Okay. <laughs> Find in me thy all in 
seated. Thank you. Peggy, thank you for your lovely gift that you bring to this church every Sunday. I just want to personally, in front of our family, thank you for your lovely talent and your commitment to providing us with the music every Sunday. Well, I will tell you I am not going to try to uh, outdo Kevin's little uh, stories that he starts on uh, Sunday morning um, that I don't think I could even begin to come close to because he has some great stories that he's told. So what I would do and would like to do this morning is just share my little prayer time with uh, God this morning. So far, God, I have done all right. I haven't gossiped, I haven't lost my temper, and I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, or overindulged, and I haven't told anyone to mind their own business and stay out of mine. I'm really glad about that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed, <laughs> and I'm probably going to need a lot of help. <laughs> so. That's all I have for uh, that. What I'd like to do is read from the New Testament in our, my message this morning. Um, the Lord laid this on my heart after um, uh, my message um, at Sugar Hill. And um, he said to prepare a message on forgiveness. And um, I said, okay. I didn't know, but... Um, Lo well, and behold, shortly after that, um, unbeknownst to me, Kevin would ask me to take his place today. So it's a great honor to, um, to share the Lord's message. Um, the message this morning is um, out of uh, Matthew 18, and it's found um, in, on page 816 in your Bible pews, if you would like to follow along. Then when Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his account up to date with his servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors, who was brought in, who owed him millions of dollars, he couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before the master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with, with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded his instant payment. His fellow, his fellow, servants, his fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the ser other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. 
Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Heavenly Father, we boldly come before your throne of grace to praise you for your unfailing love for us. Thank you for your redeeming love through your son, Jesus, that have been given freely your gift, our everlasting life through him only and not by our works, lest no man should boast. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for the shedding of your blood, for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will touch our lives today with the truth of your message and that we will share it with others by the power of your spirit that lives in us as we follow you through these present days. This world is not falling apart. It's falling into place just as you have planned. We know, Jesus, your return is inevitable, and we who are called by your name wait for your return. Come, Lord Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. In the synagogue, so Peter presents to Jesus, Should I forgive seven times? Well, in the synagogues in, in Peter's days, three is what they taught. Three times. You forgive, you forgive someone that has offended you three times. So to forgive somebody three times would be, you know, a, showing great mercy. So Peter decides, I'm going to up the ante. <clears throat> I'm going for seven. And seven represents the number of perfection. And Jesus knows this. So Peter states that Jesus says to him, No, not seven, but 70 times seven. Well, we all can do the math. That's 490. But that's not what this is about. This is about keeping track. And if we're keeping track of the sins that people have forgiven against us, and we truly haven't forgiven them. <clears throat> we also, <clears throat> we should also forgive those who are truly repentant, no matter how many times they ask. Psalm 103, 12. He has removed our sins as far from, the, from us as the east is from the west. When I was a new believer, I'll confess to you, I thought, well, as far as the east is from the west, at some point, the two are going to connect. <laughs> it's a good world, you know. And as a new believer, I didn't um, realize the enormity of the God that I was serving. There is no end to God's universe and to his creation. So therefore, the two would never meet. So the skins are forgiven for all of eternity. We do not bring back the sins of those who have forgiven us. When we forget, forget, <clears throat> confess our sins, not only God forgives, he forgets. If we are to follow God, we must model his forgiveness. When we forgive another, we must also forget the sin. Otherwise, we have not truly forgiven. Without the love of God, it's impossible for us to truly forgive. It is our sinful nature to keep records of those who have trespassed against us. Oh, we, we say, yes, I, I forgive you. Until the next time that person offends us. And then we can recall every offense they have committed against us with pinpoint accuracy. We all carry pain and hurt caused by others. And we have hurt others. Some of us even carry pain we have inflicted on ourselves. 
a cause of addiction is an example of that because we can't forgive ourselves because we believe the lies of others who have told us when we were younger you're no good you'll never amount to nothing you're ugly you're a liar nobody can believe a word you can say nobody will ever love you and the list goes on it may be hard to imagine someone could say such things to someone especially a child. Those words may strike at the heart of some of you right now. Some of you can relate to the pain and the hurt that were caused. Some of you have fallen victim to abusive father or mother. And those scars lie just below the surface, hidden where no one can see. But, the sur but resurface at the mere mention of that person's name. When we refuse to forgive, it's like drinking poison and waiting for our offender to die. Forgiveness is not an option. Three reasons we should forgive one another. First, God commands it. In Luke 6.37, forgive others and you will be forgiven. This message is clear. If you don't forgive others, God will not forgive you. Matthew 6 14 if you forgive those who sinned against you your Heavenly Father will forgive you but if you refuse to forgive others your father your father will not forgive your sins be kind to Ephesians 4 32 be kind to each other tender-hearted forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you failure to forgive can affect your prayer life. Mark 11, 25, but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. We can't go to the Lord asking for forgiveness with sin of unforgiveness of others on our heart. The Lord is not going to hear our prayers. Jesus taught how to forgive. We say it here every Sunday. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. But the greatest forgiveness comes from the cross. Luke 23, 34 it gives an account. When Jesus had been tortured, beaten, spit on, He'd been punched, brutally beaten, tortured. And his first statement from the cross of dead, killing him. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus let them kill him. For you, for me, for all mankind to be redeemed. That through his shed blood, our trespasses would be forgiven. No man took his life. He gave it up. It was God's love for us that held Jesus to the cross. John 3.16, I'm sure a verse that you all know so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. On the cross, one of the two condemned men alongside with Jesus, one ridiculed him, mocked him. If you are who you say you are, call down and, and save us. But Jesus then the other crucified man that were both criminals said do you not have any respect even at death you mock God and then he asked Jesus to remember him remember me when you come into your kingdom he knew God did not deserve 
the punishment that he was receiving. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Another act of forgiveness from the cross. True faith <clears throat> changes the heart. Real faith seeks peace. True forgiveness never counts those who have sinned against us. To forgive means I'm surrendering my right to get even. If you have received God's forgiveness through his son, we must forgive those who have sinned against us. Otherwise, we are saying to God, Jesus' death just wasn't enough. And you make God a liar. Jesus went to the cross to forgive us of our sins. This should be the standard by which we use to forgive those who have sinned against us. That unimaginable divine forgiveness should invoke in us love, strength, and courage to forgive others who have sinned against us. Love is the key that unlocks the chains that bind us to hate and unforgiveness. Two questions we ask. Who do we need to forgive in our lives today? Who do we need to reconcile? And that doesn't reconcile the relationship doesn't mean that that relationship needs to be restored because it's not healthy for you. It just means that you need to forgive those, that person or those people. Forgive, love is the key that unlocks the chains that bind us in unforgiveness, hatred, and, the, and, and not the offender. And the second question is, do we need and want God's forgiveness? Revelation 3.20, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. And those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sit with my father on his throne. Today I offer a prayer of salvation. I'm not assuming that everyone has received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But in order for us to forgive one another and those who have sinned against us, to put the past behind us, to bury the pain and hurt of those who have inflicted on us, we have to first receive the forgiveness that God has given each and every one of us. It's a free gift. So I'd ask just for a moment, those who would like to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior and know that they are forgiven. Their sins will never, no longer be held against them. Your plate, your, your slate is wiped clean. You are forgiven. God will never remember your sins no more. And you have to forgive others and yourself. You cannot hold yourself in captivity to unforgiveness. A salvation prayer is acknowledging in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and was raised three days later. And repent of your sins. It means turn away from your sins. And turning away doesn't mean I have the opportunity to look back. When you turn away, you're moving in the opposite direction of the life and the sins that you have committed and may still be living. So if we just take a moment with those who like to bow our heads.
and would like to receive Jesus Christ, if you have not, don't wait. There is no day that is guaranteed to any man. The Lord knows the day of our birth and the day that he calls us home to be with him. So I just ask, if you want to pray this prayer to yourself, I just ask, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I am sorry for my sins. I know in my heart that you died on the cross and paid the price for my sins. I ask you this day to come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior. And I know, Lord, that God, with his power, resurrected you from the dead, and you sit today at the right hand of his Father, and you will come again. I ask, Lord, that you be my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, there's a reason the clock is on the, the back and not in the front of the sanctuary. I told uh, Kevin I would keep it under uh, an hour. So, <laughs> um, thank you all for uh, still being present and with me and I would love for us to close our last hymn that is handed out with the bulletins today and I may be a little biased because this is my wife and I favorite song and I think that it's not in our bulletin um, but I know Peggy knows this song as well so if you would stand and let's sing Victory in Jesus.
brother. I, we got to add that in our new hymn, though, huh? <laughs> well, thank you all for um, being here this morning. And after um, we do have refreshments at uh, the downstairs, uh, outside, thank you. They'll be outside. Um, join us for th- some fellowship and uh, time uh, just, to, uh, just to be with one another and enjoy. Today, uh, this morning's uh, benediction um, comes from Romans. Um, Romans 2, the forgiveness of our sins through Christ. But now, God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. As was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true of everyone who believes, no matter who they are. Please be seated as we take up the light and the word are removed from the sanctuary. Thank you all for this privilege and this honor to share this message today with you. And I pray that the Lord's peace be with you all as you go out into the world today and this week that you can share this message of forgiveness. Peace be with you all. 